There we go. Uh, Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Gloria Horn Sewing Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today is Technique Tuesday. I am Joni and um, Gloria's sister. Uh, yesterday, she drove to Baltimore to see her uh, grandchildren for a grandparents' day. And yesterday, I drove home from Annapolis um, after my weekend of First Holy Communion. So I guess we imagined Cross ourselves... Path passing each other on, on the turnpike. Um, so I hope she's, I hope she's having a good time. I had a really nice time. It was a, it was a very nice um, weekend. It's Saturday morning she had First Holy Communion. So Gloria's granddaughters is coming up in about three weeks, maybe a little less than three weeks now. Okay, so um, although, you know, I, when I drove down, it was last Tuesday, the day after the eclipse, and I, there was so much traffic on the turnpike, and I kept wondering, what's going on here? Well, you know, because it, it, it seemed like it was summertime, and school was let out, and everybody was going on vacation, and I pulled into a rest stop, and the parking lot was packed, the, the uh, restaurants were packed, and I didn't even realize it, but it was because of the uh, the eclipse. Everybody was driving home right. from uh, from viewing the eclipse on Monday. So today um, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off the last time. Um, okay, so I should say if you were on Facebook for the very first time and you'd like to um, watch the show and um, and shop with us, what you'll need to do is go up to the comment bar and type in register and then uh, kind of create an account. So you'll put your first name, your last name and um, create a password and then you'll come back and watch us. I, for those of you that are on the app, you are all set to shop with us. And that's the easiest way to kind of shop with us right now is through the app, but we are also on YouTube YouTube. And, yeah, and uh, well, today, well, today we're we're just on YouTube in the app and and the website, okay. Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, and the um, okay. But but as soon as we get a little more set up, we'll be back on TikTok and Twitch, Twitter. Yeah, they're all, all of them. <laughs> so we have to learn about all of them. I don't know about many of them. Like I, I've never tried TikTok. That could don't be fun. It. Don't do it. Okay. I would say don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I, I think Facebook and Instagram's enough. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. And get the app. I like apps for the um, it's for free, everything. Right? It's easier. It's easier. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, so we are embroidering our um, tote bag, and I started last week, and I'm using clear blue, blue towels. So I know a lot of you got these about two years ago, and they're really fun to use. Um, they, so, they, so what I did, the first thing I did was I decided what design I wanted. And this is, um, all of the designs are on a USB stick. And um, then there is a book in here to, to explain. Let's see this. See where our book is. Well, maybe this one isn't in it. Um, hmm. Okay, but we, it I'm comes with a very nice book and yeah. it explains all of the, it has all the instructions on how to use it. And it gives you a picture of all the, um, all the designs. Um, there are designs for spring, summer, winter, and fall. And then also there's ones called loops. So it looks like a like stippling that has loops. And then there's one called swirls. And I'm using swirls today. Um, and you'll be able to see it when we go over to the embroidery machine. But that was the first thing I did. So I went through the catalog and um, got out the and, and, and chose a design. Now the designs come in every all kinds of sizes so they will come in um let's see it was okay right here um the the block tiles they come in two by two two by four two by six two by eight two by ten and then they go into four inch it's the same thing four by four four by six four by eight four by ten and then six by six six by eight, six by 10, and then eight by eight and eight by 10. So then what I did was I chose what size I was gonna use. And so there are all these different templates and you can see they're all here. 
And so there's some for the blocks and also some for the borders. So I chose what size I wanted to use and I wanted to use the eight by eight. So this is a, the template in the center, okay? And then I want on the sides, I measured this and I found that the, the four by eight would be a good size for the sides, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then I trace them. So first of all, I, I just laid it here on top of my bag and kind of centered it in this little section. And I just, when I looked at it, I made sure that there was about half an inch right here at the bottom and then about a half an inch at the top. And then I just, I centered it. So there's like, there's like, it's not quite a quarter of an inch on each side, but a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. So I just made sure that it was centered. And then you take the pen that comes with it and it's a water soluble pen. And I marked the center and then also the, um, the center going the other way. And so I marked the X and Y lines. And then over here, I did the same thing. And the one thing I did do that I kind of tried to match up this line with that one right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then I marked it. Okay. And like that. And then I took this one over here and the same thing will mark the center line. We want to line those up and then we'll mark the center. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do them on two different machines. I just wanted to show you the difference in the two machines on how we center things and how we line them up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this one is going to be done on the Solaris, and then the other one is going to be done on the Pathfinder. And the Pathfinder has this really nice, uh, it's called the sensor pen, and I can take the sensor pen and find the center of my design, and then uh, we'll use it, and it will jump right to it. Mm -hmm. But um, oh, it. the largest hoop on the Pathfinder is an eight by 12. Okay. So my design, I didn't want to use the eight because it wouldn't fit in the hoop because it's exactly that size. So what I did is I went and got the next size down and I might make this a little larger. We're going to um, see, see where we'll, we'll try that. So maybe it will be more like six and a half or seven. But that's what I, I thought would be the best thing to do because it won't take the eight. So I'm just going to take this and send it, put it in the center, and also make sure that I've got about a half an inch here at the top and the bottom, and then about the same on either side. Okay. And so then we'll mark that one. Okay. The Pathfinder is like the, um, the Spirit. So some of you may have the Spirit and the, you also have the sensor pen. Okay, so there's my center. And then I'm going to use the same size on the sides. I'm going to use the four by eight. So the eight is fine going this, you know, the, um, this way from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit too big for that, um, that, that hoop, because it's, it's seven and three quarters when you know it. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here. So when I place this, I kind of line up my center with the, my line going across the center. And then we'll mark this. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start with the Solaris. Matches your shirt. 
Yes, it really does. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to start with the Solara. So we're going to come back yep. here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and hoop this. I'll take this off and hoop it. But then I'm going to, re when I re-hoop it, we won't, um, we won't take it off. So I have the 10 and a half by 16 magnetic hoop. Now, I already did this center last week. Okay, and I, I'm going to show you the back so you can kind of see a little bit better. I, I have a, a, a blue and white variegated thread, and it has a really pretty design. So I want to do the sides. So I'm going to put this edge right along the edge of my hoop, and then we'll snap it on. that and we'll do one side one way of how using like maybe the laser light and then we'll do the other side and I'll show you how to use a projector All right. we'll do them different ways okay Okay, so we're going to put the USB stick in. I think it's over here. So this is the USB stick that has all the designs. Uh, um, and it's, so we're going to pop this in. Sue asks, is it, what is the difference between clear blue tiles and quilting edge to edge on the Solaris? Well, the quilting, the, um, the Solaris has the edge-to-edge -edge built in. Mm -hmm. So then this is um, designs that are um, they're really meant for to quilt blocks, mm -hmm. okay, instead of like maybe an overall. You could do an all overall, but it's really meant for just to quilt blocks. So I think that's probably the big difference. Okay. Yeah. And you can do borders on that. So they have, they have, you know, narrow ones and, and uh, things like that. So, Very good. okay. So first of all, I'm going to go back to home and um, then we're going to go into embroidery and we're going to go into the pocket so I can read what's on the USB stick. And right here is that little symbol to do that. And this is, these are the folders that are on the USB stick. So I want the, there's the embroidery files and there's also the instructions. Um, and then also it says, okay, there's also a runner that is include, included with it. And it's called Seasonal Houses. And um, I wish I had that book, but it's, it's a nice, it's a uh, runner that has houses on it mm -hmm. and they show you how to quilt it. Okay. And then this is the embroidery files. And then we're going to just kind of scroll through and we want to get the PES files. So it has all the different formats. So if you, um, if you don't have a brother or a baby lock, then you can, you'll find your format on here. Um, then, uh, so there's the, the Vidi blocks. Those were uh, real nice. They were um, just like two inch designs that you would use on little blocks in your corners. And then there's borders with loops, borders with swirls, and then centering crosshairs. Okay, then fall loops, so uh, spring, summer. But what I want is the swirls. So I'm going to open up the swirls. And there is one you can make a, a complete, if you just want to quilt a block, you can open this one. And I'll just bring up the designs. But so you can see there are, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. You, there are edges, so you can, you actually quilt a block. So it has these rows of stitching around it. Mm -hmm. So, but what we want is, um, here, we want to go back here, read what's on the stick, and then we're going to go to embroidery files and find our format. And we, we want the swirls and then the clear blue tiles. 
So when I bring up these designs, you'll see that it doesn't have those stitches around it. So, um, and it's, they're very easy to identify. It has the sizes printed right on it. So there's a two by two, two by four, um, two by six, two by eight, they're all in order. And then we go into the, okay, this one is a four by four, four by six, four by eight. So I wanted the four by eight. There we go. Okay, so there's my design. And we're going to um, going to hit set, and then I'm going to slide my hoop in. Okay. And I have a variegated thread. It's blue and white. And let me put that down. Okay. And we're going to slide the hoop in. Okay. All right. So then we're going to go to embroidery. Now I have. Let's, this has a hoop on it, a smaller hoop. So let's go in and change to the size hoop that we're using. So we're going to go to the settings page. And um, this, the frame size on right there was six and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. But I'm going to go in and select the um, 10 and 5 eighths by the 16. Okay, so now you see I don't have that hoop around there. This is my whole sewing field. Um, okay, so we're going to go to embroidery. And um, let's say we just want to turn on that laser light. Okay, and it comes on and I can see it right mm -hmm. there. But I want to embroider, I want to find my center, which is over here. So I'm just going to go to layout and we'll go to move. And I'm going to move this over like that. Okay, and then we're going to move it up a little bit. Okay, and I'd say now it's it won't. It's about Can't a sixteen. Yes, it's, it's about a sixteenth of an inch away from where I want it to be, which I probably could just sew it out. But I'm just going to give it a little tug here. Okay, and there, now it's perfect. So that's one way of, um, of sewing it out, um, of, of centering it. But then let's say we want to go in here and um, there's a needle down yeah, and it's, it is pointing right to the center of the hoop. So I'm going to open that up and then I can find all the different points. Let's make sure that it's in the right place up here. So if I, I can see that this is going to kind of fall right into place, if I go back to the center, it follows that line. And then I'll go check that part, and that also follows it. I'm going to go back to the center, and we'll try the sides. There we go. So I think that's good. If it was off, I could, you know, rehoop it. Now I'm a little close right here. So let's turn on the camera and make sure it's not going to sew over that. Um, strap. So we will go in and um, let's, we'll, uh, let's see, we're going to turn on the camera so that you have a camera both in the edit page and both on the, on the embroidery page. But we'll use the one on the embroidery page. And um, now it is all grayed out and that is because, let's put it back in the, let's Let's go back, let's move it and go back to the center and we'll try that. No, it's still grayed out. So let's do this, close that. Let's go back to return and we'll try that one. Okay, hmm, why is it grayed out? It must be something to do with, um, hmm. okay, <laughs> let's see. I have the right foot on and okay, let's let's go in here and see if it tells me anything. No, I have green light. Okay, we're gonna think about this for a second. It'll come to me. Um, there's the camera and but it's grayed out. So let's go into settings and see if there's anything that we can change. Hit embroidery is what Elizabeth says. Okay, let's so see. yeah, so no, it's gonna it's gonna let me embroider. Huh. So yeah, that's what I did when I went back. I checked it. Okay. So let's go back to, um, and I have my 
the right hoop on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have, um, that's to think of all the things that might, and the latch is down. The latch is down. Yeah. Okay. But let's go in here and see what's going on. Um, background image display. Okay. I'm on the source. Image to black. Let's see if anybody in the comments has any Yeah, idea. let's see what they... It has to be embroidery, is what Sue says. Um, as if you are ready to start sewing, and then you'll see it. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not thinking straight. I'm tired. <laughs> I, <laughs> you I'm you not had quite a trip. I, I did. I did. I did. Okay. Okay. I, did you have fun at least? I sure. did. I had a really good time. Yeah. I'm not thinking straight. That's okay. I just had to hit scan. <laughs> I, I just saw all these things grayed was... out and I, okay, so what we'll do is um, let's hit scan, okay? Right. No, it's clucking at me. It's clicking at you. Okay. Huh. The hoop is down. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. And... Huh. Let's see if our, and our, and our, um, this is not working either. Okay. Hmm. All right. So wait a minute now. Let's get to the bottom of All this. Right. There it is. There it is. What'd you oh. do? Um, I, I, um, I, I, I started to close it. You closed and then, it okay. and opened it back up. And yeah. It was just... And then it was fine. Okay. Okay. The, the frame will move to be scanned with the building camera. Say, okay. All right. So it's taking a picture of everything that's in my hoop right now. Sometimes just trying again. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. All you need. Okay. All right, it's thinking. Remove the embroidery. Yeah, frame. I don't know. All of a sudden it went. It, Do we have it, an it, issue with this machine, maybe? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think so. Let's try it again. Okay. Do we want to reboot and just start from fresh? Well, that's what it did. It it, it shut down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to. It probably may have needed to calibrate the, the embroidery unit over again it could be yeah okay, okay. so we're going to go into embroidery we're going to select the uh, go into the pocket mm -hmm. and we're going to read what's on the usb stick hmm. try the mouse you have the mouse plug yeah in. i do yeah okay it's plugged in Oh, you know what? There may have been this may have been a machine that needed some work on the, on the projector. Oh, really? Let me, let me okay. With, let me check with Steve, and I'll be right back. Why don't you tell him about the okay the so trip a little bit? Well, or should I go over here and do this? Yeah, slide? let's do the Okay. Slide All right. Okay. Then we'll and they're going to figure it out. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to use the um, the ten, and I'm going to do the whole thing here. And we'll figure out what's going on with that one. Um, I'm surprised, though. I am too. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna, and I will get my thread from over there. Maybe I can find. If you can save our, our butts, that would be cool. Uh, maybe I should just need to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your going on? We'll just shut, try, set. I'll try shutting it down. Okay. All right, so let's take this off. And then if not, we'll just, we won't worry about it. We've got another one over on the left, so we can try that too if you get stuck. Okay. Oh, we do? Mm -hmm. There's another Solaris right here. Okay, all right, well then here we'll just. Okay, so it's going to move, and then we're going to go to um,
All right, so we're going to go to embroidery, the pocket. Okay. The USB stick, mm -hmm. embroidery files. So far, so good. And then we're going to click down to PES. And then we're going to use I'll go through and look for the swirls. Okay. And then the clear blue towels folder. And I'm looking for the four by eight. So this is four by eight is right there. Okay. And we'll hit set. All right. Then we're going to slide this in. It probably just needed to be shut down. Yeah. Okay. And put the little lever down. All right, so now we're going to go to embroidery, and we were trying to use the camera, and we're going, the frame will move, we'll say okay. There we go, so it's taking a picture of everything that's in my hoop, so I'll be able to see the design right on my fabric. So right now it's in the center, so we'll move it. Calibration yeah. error. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Well, do you want to try this machine over yeah. here? Yeah. Hmm. We'll take a look at that one. Yeah. And we'll we'll figure out, and maybe next time we'll we'll find we'll tell them what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll okay. just move on, and yeah. Luckily, okay. we have another one. Mm-hmm. All right. So I need to get my. Um, you need to get your thread. My bobbin. And your bobbin. And okay. Yeah, I'll grab it from over here. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to thread the bobbin, and, and I know. I need the USB. USB, stick. I'll grab it yeah. for you if you okay. want to get it. Mm-hmm. Let's see if the comments. Mm-hmm. This is what happens in real life at home. It does. It does happen. So you get this is reality t <laughs> reality TV. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you just need a second Solaris and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Please wait a while. Okay. <clears throat> so it's calibrating. Okay. And then I'm going to thread the needle. Okay, so we're going to go into embroidery and we'll uh, choose the pocket and then the USB stick. Okay, and the embroidery files. And then we're going to go to the PES files and we want to do the swirls. So there's our swirls and we want the clear blue tiles. So I was looking for the four by. Um, the four by eight, so this is four by, okay. This is, see, this is, let's see what that one is. Okay, that one's, that one, it's not it. Um, okay, this one, that one is four by eight, okay. Okay. So then we're gonna hit set, and we're gonna take our hoop, so we'll use the camera on this side, and then we'll use the projector on the other side. Okay. All right, and so, okay, so we're gonna go to embroidery, and we're gonna go to the camera and scan, and the frame will move. So it's taking a picture of everything that's in my hoop, 
I saw that that other one needed an update. Yeah, so it maybe, does. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably it. About mm -hmm. it. All right. There so we there, go. there we go. Okay, so I can just move this. Now I have my fabric and there's my design. So I can just move the design over. Okay. And I can zoom in just to kind of look is at so that. Cool how it, how, yeah, how and so that. I can see it's, it's fine. Oh. It's, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah. There we go. So it's green stitching on top. The, the design is in green and it's sitting on top of the um, there. And it looks like it's fine. Um, there's a little bit um, right here that's just over the edge. So maybe what I would do would be just to, um, here we'll close that and we'll go into layout and we're going to rotate it maybe just one degree there i think that did it maybe i'll do maybe i'll just do another little like a tenth of a degree there and it's like uh, so i can see that that's right there it's in place and i'm about a half an inch from the top and the bottom all right okay so that's my camera and then also i'm you know i, I can see my um my little my center and then there's my needle and i can also turn back on my laser light and you'll see that it's right there. Okay, so I could probably move that up just a little and I can actually see it moving on my fabric there. I'd say that's good. That's a good, perfect placement. All right, so we'll say, okay. And then we will, so I have everything threaded and we're just gonna hit go and it's gonna move, jump to where it needs to go and sew out that design. So this will take two minutes. It's got uh, 1,488 stitches. There we go. So. All right. While you do that, why don't I throw the blooming blue? Oh, tote okay. In the bubble. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll do is I'll after it's done sewing, I'm just going to lift the uh, the top magnetic hoop off and we'll slide it over the machine and then uh and i'll reposition my fabric oops 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 let's see what happened here okay let's get up caught in here we're caught yeah uh, put you caught in the yeah okay so we're not having a, okay let's we're do the time yeah uh let's see it's so the best thing to do if that happens to you is to this take the foot work. off. Yes, and this this is off. called <laughs> this is called a, a train wreck. But <laughs> I, and the the easiest thing to do to get out of it is to take the foot off and then to snip the stitches. Okay. So it kind of so of I just yeah I need a pair of snips and then we'll fix it up. Um, let's see snips. Can you use a yeah? Can you use these? Yeah, they say. There, okay. So now I'm gonna put that there. That's the easiest way if that ever happens to you. So can you describe like what happened that caused it? To... Yeah, it took one little stitch on that little strap and it that's and it so it wrapped it. it got caught on it. Yeah. So it okay. took one little stitch. That's all it takes. Yeah. So we're gonna put that back on. But that's, that's the easiest way to fix it is just take your foot off. And this is what they call in the industry a, a train wreck? Yeah, okay. that's what we call it. Oh, it wasn't okay. that bad, though, was it? No. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm still kind of lined up here. So I'm going to, um, let's turn it off and because and, um, maybe since I... You got all... 
shifting. Yeah, it's not calibrated right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn it off. Okay, and then we're going to turn it on, and it the resume feature will come on. So we're showing you how oh, to fix features. things today. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to come on. And um, things will go wrong. I know that. Yeah. My camera earlier today just yeah. stopped working. Okay. And then, all right, so we're going to go over here and remove the embroidery frame so it's going to calibrate. See, so yeah, we kind of threw the design off when we, when it did that. So we're going to say, okay. Was the dark blue fabric not stitched down? Is that what? It, it has, it has a, um, it's top stitched down a quarter of an inch away. Quarter of so an this inch. is for the resume feature. It says, okay, to recall and resume previous memory. So we'll say, okay. Okay, and then I'm going to slide it in. Okay, and the carriage of the border unit will move. Okay, and then we're going to go in and we're just going to advance to one stitch. And you see it jumps to where it needs to go right there. And what I'm going to do is just kind of back it up 10 stitches and we're going to go back up and right there is where it happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we're going to go there and see, I can see that it is all lined up. I see my needles coming down so I can turn on that laser light again and just make sure. And it's, it's perfect. It's, it's right. right on. It's right on that stitch. Okay. I just had to back up. So what I'm going to do just to make sure that doesn't happen again is th this is another little trick. Okay. If you need to sew very, very slow, okay, let's say you've gotten to some point where you, you want it, uh, you need to hold on to your fabric and sew very, very slow, um, then you hold your start button in. So what we'll do is I'm going to back up a few, just another 10 stitches, and then we're going to just hold it in and see it will it won't sew fast see until i get away from that little crucial spot mm -hmm. see that's where it happened right there and you see how slow it's sewing okay and then i can let go and it will and then here we can So I do that quite a bit. There we go. I'll say that was very helpful. Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. No, that's a little trick. And so we're... gonna watch it there mm -hmm. there we go so the next one I'm going to make sure it's a little further away Great save is what we're saying in the comments. What's that? That was a great save. Was, a, was it a great save? And a great learning moment. <laughs> it I, is. I, yeah. yeah. Do you want to see those things? You don't want to have to. What What would you have done if that happened? Would you, yeah. you know, you. Call Joni. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, take your foot off and then you'll be able to snip. And it was just like one or two stitches and I snipped them and I was able to get, get it free. But, um, you, 
you have, some people might just start all over again, mm -hmm. you know, or, but so you don't want to do that either. Okay, so now I am done. So we're going to say, okay, and I need to sew this out on the other side. So what we'll do is go into layout and I'm just going to put it, um, move it back into the center for right now. And then I'll take the magnetic coop off. Well, and then, over here, huh? yeah, okay, and then we're going to put this, move it this way, like that, and then I can take, bring this over again, okay, and it looks like There we go. So make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay. And then I'm going, this, let's say, um, let's place it. And then we'll use a projector to make sure that it's not um, sewing too close to that strap. So what we'll do is, um, Turn on the laser light, and I'm going to move it over here to where my center is. And so we'll take the move button, and we're going to go over this way. And I can see my blue line right there, so I'm going to line that up. Okay, and then I need to move it up. just need to go two to this side so that looks like it's pretty good all right so now what we'll do is turn on the projector so it looks like a little cone like the light is shining down right here and we'll touch that and it will it'll say please wait and you can see I'm I'm over here on the right so I'm going to move this and let's let's check out the top first Okay, so I can see my design. It's in green stitches, and I'm about, about a half an inch from the top. Okay, and then we're going to move this down here. And we're going to do this, look for the same thing. So it's about a half an inch, but let's, let's check out this part. Because I can move it over a little bit. Let's kind of check this out and see if the stitching is going to go into the strap. That's a little close. So um, let's move it this way. A couple more there. And I can see now that it's going to miss it. Should we get a piece of paper out so they can see it? Um, um, like a white. Can we, you, we can can you see, see it? it? Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. So this is, it's right there. I can even move it one more. One more little smidge, and then we're going to move this, the red box, up, and we'll we'll check out this little swirl right there and make sure that's not, no, that's fine. That's got plenty of room. And then we'll check out this, these, this swirl, this big one, and that's fine. And that is right here. There. So we're good. We we're should have done that. Be mm -hmm. in the big to begin with. Um, so now we'll say okay, and there it's going to jump, and it's a little bit off center, but you know it's not right on my my blue dot, but that's okay because it's going to it's going to fill that area in. All right, so we're going to touch this, and it's going to jump to where it needs to go, and see it just missed the strap. That was the closest one right there. And we'll sew that out. There we go. So it's fun. <laughs> Even when you make a mistake, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs>
So did, did you mirror the image, or are you using the same image? I'm using the exact the same, same one, one. Okay. yeah. 1-800-CALL-JONI. Yeah. That should be a hotline. <laughs> Pretty cool. And it is now, so cool that the machines can do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. There you go. I think you just showed how many different techniques in in like ten minutes it was. It yeah. was just great. Yeah, I yeah, yeah I, I try and uh, show every because you. You have them, you might as well use them all, right? Yeah. We should do a show where you take callers and we'll, we'll treat it like a hotline. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll need a call screener, I think, though. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, and this is just about done. Okay, so now my one side of my bag is quilted. So now we're going to go over and do the other one on the um, Pathfinder. And uh, so we're going to move over here. Here we go. And first thing we'll do is um, hoop the bag. Do you want to hoop up here so okay. that we can... Okay. Mm -hmm. All just right, so I have... Space. This is the the eight by twelve hoop. This okay. is this is the largest hoop that the Pathfinder will take. So, um, so I'm going to lay my fabric over it. And you'll notice, like if you have one of these, um, I like to using the the tapes that they give you because right here in the, where zero is would be the center of your fabric. And, um, and it's, it just helps you to kind of get your everything in your hoop nice and straight. So what I'll do is I'll just go like this. And, okay, and just place it on top of the magnetic frame that connects to the machine. And then we'll slide. Make sure that your top layer is sitting right on top of your bottom one. Okay, because sometimes you, you know, you place it on there and they, it might be an, you know, an inch or so off. So you want to make sure it's sitting right on top of it. And right now I'm, I'm not in the center, which is okay because we can center it. But I'm just kind of making sure that, um, kind of, I'm using the straps as my guideline. Okay, so here is my center right there. And so we're going to bring the design up first. Oh, look, somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> left me some money. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> no way. Yeah, with my face on it. How much is it? <laughs> it is $429. What an amount. Jeez, wow. that's great. These are Joni bucks, I, I guess? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That looks like All a right, legal so, tender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I do need to, I'll have to borrow back my thread from the other machine. And, um, okay. Yeah, I'll just grab yep. this. Yeah, my blue and white thread. Okay. Mm. Okay. So this is, it is, this is an embroidery only machine. And um, the largest hoop is the 8 by 12, which is a really nice size. And so we'll thread the machine. It threads exactly like the Solaris is. Has a, okay. Okay, so using the presser foot lifter to raise the presser foot. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. 
All right. So now we're going to, and I also need my USB stick. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring it. Um, I'm going to show you how to bring it up on this machine. So we'll just, let's start. Let's start fresh. Yeah. Let's we're going to recalibrate and everything. So we'll say, so I'll put my USB stick in. Okay. So, all right. The carriage of the embroidery unit will move. We'll say, okay. So now it is calibrating. Okay, I can go to embroidery or embroidery edit. I always go to embroidery edit because I ever, if I never need to resize a little bit or, or um, move it around or uh, do any customizing, you can do that in embroidery edit. In embroidery, you pick the design out and you sew it out the way it is. So I always go to embroidery edit. Okay, so now I wanna read what's on the USB stick. And um, there's my folders. So um, there's the embroidery folder. You can see it looks a little different than the Solaris, but everything is there. Um, so these are all the different formats and I want the PES and I want my swirls. So let's scroll down and there's my swirls. Okay, now these, um, there's the finished blocks and then also the clear blue tiles. So we'll touch that and then, um, now the designs don't have the sizes on them. It was a little, e it was, um, it's a little easier on the Solaris because it has the size, but you just select it and it, the size comes up right away. So remember I said I wanted to do a little bit smaller because the, um, the design is eight by eight and the, the hoop is seven and three quarters. So I chose the, the next size down and we're, we're going to make it a little bit we're going to stretch it out a little bit so instead of being eight by eight it's eight by six okay and it, it tells me that right there and that was the very first one so that was easy to find so we'll um so we're going to hit set and there's my design and uh right here is size and so i'm just going to touch that and we're going to just make it a little wider the height is perfect so we're going to go wider. Um, the arrows will point out, and we're just going to go touch that. And the size will change right there. And let's say that's OK. Then we'll try that size. And then we'll um, say we'll close that. And then we will go into embroidery. OK, so I have this sensor pen that is amazing. Um, I can, I, this will help me find the center of my design. So what we'll do is take my hoop. So some of you had this spirit that was the, uh, Pathfinder, um, took the place of the spirit. So you also would have the sensor pen. And then also some other machines had the sensor pen too, like I believe the Unity did. Okay. Now it's going to say the carriage of the border unit will move. We'll say, okay. Okay. And um, so this is, there's my design and this is my center. Um, so I'm going to take my sensor pen and you do need to calibrate this. Maybe I should show you that first. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did it before when I came in but um but let's take yeah yeah, cool. yeah you want to see that because maybe some of you have never even calibrated your pen so let's take this off okay and so you want to calibrate it to the way that you hold it so we'll say um we're going to go into the settings page right here and we'll touch it and we're going to look for sensor pen calibration. So on this machine, let's keep going, sensor function calibration. So that was on page three of seven. So we're going to touch this little plus sign and it says OK to automatically lower the presser foot and we'll say OK. And then it's telling me, it says, touch the first point using the sensor pen as indicated. So on your machine, there's these 
two green dots. Some of you may say, I wonder why I have a little green dot there. But um, so this is one and this is two, and they number them for you. And it says, touch the first point using the sensor pen, and you just hold it however it's comfortable for you. And you just come over and touch that green dot. And I hope you heard that little bling. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it also turns red, so it tells me that it, it identified that you touched it. And then it says to go over and touch point two. So I can go in and touch that one. And see, now they're both red. I can reset it if I want, if I felt like I didn't um, do it correctly or something. And you can do it, um, you don't have to do it every time you, you uh, sew, but you may want to you know, eventually try it again. So we'll say, okay. So now the pen is calibrated, really easy. So we're gonna close that and there's my design and we'll take our hoop. And we're gonna go in here. And slide it in. Oh. All right, then the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands free, okay, and okay. So I have my, it's in the center of the hoop, but my center is right here. So I'm going to touch the pen. Oh, let me see where, where you are. Okay, right here, there's a little, but you can see the pen is right there. Okay. So we're going to touch that, and it says, touch the LCD to select the area containing the two points to be later specified with the sensor pen. We want to go right to the, to the middle, and that is the default setting. So I'm, um, I could go, if you ever had something you wanted to position in any of the corners, you could do that. But I'm just, we're going to go in the center, so we'll say OK. See, if I change that, see how that, uh, yeah. So if I had something in the upper right that I wanted to, mm -hmm. uh, you would touch that. But we want the center, and that's the default. So we'll just say OK. Now it says OK to revert to the original position and or angle. So if I had moved it around, it would just put it back where it was. So we'll say OK. The carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands, et cetera, away from the carriage. OK. So it's kind of giving me room to touch it. So select an on-screen key to indicate the center or side position where you want the embroidered area. There again, the center is a default. So I, I don't really have to touch it, but if I was over here, I could touch over here. Sometimes you wanna um, put something in like maybe above a pocket. So you'd, you'd go down here mm -hmm. and line that up. But so we're, but we want the center. And then it says, use the sensor pen to set the position and the angle of the pattern on the fabric and the order indicated. So number one is right here in the center. So I'm just gonna go over here and touch it like that. And I heard the little bling. And then number two is about a half an inch or so, or right, I, and I touched the blue line that I drew. So so is, it, is there a specific point on the blue line? Or, I'm, or I'm, about, I would say about a half an inch, half an above, inch? About, above the, the, the okay. center. Okay. So there I, there's indicates to me that they're both, um, they both turn red. Now right here you can, um, you can try it out. I could just go in and sew it out now, and, um, but let's, let's test it. So. We're gonna go in and touch that. And then there again, it's telling me the embroidery unit is gonna move. We'll say, okay, and there. I would say that's really good. Okay, now I can fine tune that. You see, as soon as I touch that, these little arrows came up and I could probably, if I wanted it exact, it's right there on the blue line. Maybe I could move it down just a smidge mm -hmm. uh, to, to, get, to really fine tune it. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's amazing. Wow. That's really helpful for centering your designs. So we're gonna say, okay, and um, adjust the second position. So there again, it's right there on that blue line. So I'm not gonna touch it. If it was off to the right or left a little bit, I could shimmy it around, but we're just gonna say, okay. 
All right. And then um, you can see my design now isn't in the center of my hoop here. It is, it, it is moved up. But it's going to be in the center of my mm -hmm. back. Okay. Okay. But let's check it out. Um, so I can also turn on my laser light right here. Okay. And you see a little red dot there. And I can go over, let's check the sides. So, um, cause we don't want it to run into the straps. Mm -hmm. So, um, right here, this is that same, uh, icon key that we used on the Solaris. And, and then we can check the sides. You see where it is. So that looks good. Okay. Let me see over here. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. And this side looks we're going over to the yeah, left. Yeah, it's good. Looks good. Yeah, and then we can check the top. There, I'm about a half an inch from the top, and we should be about a half an inch from the bottom. There. So I'm going to sew that out. All right. Okay? So easy, right? Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. I wonder how many people have had this made and you've never used it. Right. Maybe, Comes maybe the don't tell us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now I have a red light, I, and this is a little deep. You touch lower your foot and I've got my green light then and I will just hit my start button and it's going to jump to where it needs to go and sew out that design. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll do another, we'll do one of the sides. Um, just watch it sew for a second. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Anyone? it's a it's a nice machine for you know if you've got your sewing machine and you love it and uh, yeah and you want to embroider um, it's a it's a good it's a good start, starting point because of the hoop size and um, the features that help you to embroider and the sure. nice big screen. And so is the process similar for the the sides that you're going to do? Is it, yes. Gonna... Yeah. Do you want to do you want? Well, to... I, if it's pretty similar, I think, you know, you think they're ready. It is. Maybe yeah. we should go up and see if there's any comments that, that we should look at. And, OK. OK. And, and see. And maybe we'll catch catch Steve. I think somebody was asking about a, a machine. OK. All right. And we can show a couple different uh, totes that they can they can purchase. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. The same thing. I would do. And then we'll see what time it is, and then we'll come back and mm -hmm. we can yeah. do another side. I would just time. go in and pick out my new uh, design, the 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 one that was four, and then and and hoop it just like I did on the Solaris, and bring it over to the edge, and then um, use my pen to center it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, thank you. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And what is this all about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's I don't why know. I want to catch Steve. <laughs> okay. Because what does the number indicate? Is that number important to you? Uh, oh, here he is. Okay. So, all right. Okay, what is this? Yeah. So this is uh, Joni money. Yeah, that I saw that. Glory Orange. So with the with the purchase of a Pathfinder, you get 10% credit back. Okay, so wow. So you get $429 back to buy Okay. Whatever, whatever you like. Okay. So, yeah. Joni, Joni can help you spend that money. So I will. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of the machines, certain machines, we we uh, were able to offer a credit back, and this is one of the ones. So um, mm -hmm. so the machine is on sale for forty two ninety nine, and then you'll get that four hundred twenty nine dollar credit back yeah. to use uh, on hoops or you know whatever whatever you think is great. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a nice. Okay. Uh, so you can ship to Texas. Somebody's we do. Asking. Yep. Yeah. I think they're they're talking about specifically Solaris, but um, Gotta, what about the Pathfinder? Uh, we can ship the Pathfinder. Um, uh, just just give me a call and we can make that happen. We offer free shipping, uh, mm -hmm. and then um, if you're out of the state of Pennsylvania, you don't you don't pay the sales tax, which is kind of nice too. So. All the way to Texas? I don't have a budget. Yes, yeah, so all the way to Texas. We can ship uh, okay. for free. So yeah, yep. all the way to yeah. Texas. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did they see the, did they see the the journey money? Yeah, did they, get, we, did they yeah. get a good view of it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Right. So. Yeah, I like that. I've been busy making counterfeit money. 
Yeah. And you know what? You can't print it. Yeah, you need to see this. The they printers, uh, it'll come up saying like you're not allowed to do that, mm -hmm. and then you have to you have to rig the system, and then you can get it to print. So mm -hmm. don't try to use that anywhere. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, except here. Except right? for here, you can yes, use it here. Yeah, you can yeah. use so, it here. Yeah. It's yeah, very legit here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Any sales on smaller machines? We have sales on. All oh, the machines. machines, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now um, through through, through uh, April, we've got some really great deals going on. Mm -hmm. um, similar to what we were offering um, at the private app-only event, uh, some of those prices are, are, are still in effect. So, uh, we just had to put our prices back up to what they're supposed to be on our website. But if you call me, we can make something. Uh, we can make something happen for you. So, mm -hmm. but okay. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And it, I, you know what? I was, I'm was i going to put you on the spot here, Johnny. Maybe I just showed something on the serger, but I just picked my favorite stitch and showed them. I showed the wave earlier, and I showed the flat lock wide. Yeah. Every show, I was going to show them something on the Triumph because it's National Serger Month. Thank and you. I feel like show them everyone about... needs a, uh, a Triumph out there. Yeah. yeah. So, how about a rolled edge? That's great. Yeah. Okay. Let's, we'll, we'll do a rolled edge with Joni. I'll get her set up on the machine, and whenever okay. you're ready, we'll do All it. All right. Yep. Yeah. Because everybody loves a rolled edge. That's one reason why you get a, a serger. But here, we have a couple of things to sell, and we have other. We have some other tote bag patterns. This one I love. This is called Hearts Anthem, and um, Looks like the, the main fabric is missing. Is it really? Yeah, it was. Um, it hits that flag fabric. Okay, it's well, we'll really. It yeah, okay, we can see it. Shape. This one I loved. Um, this is, if this fabric is, this is the, the main one. This will be the, the straps and the borders, the top. And if um, you get it, he'll zoom in on it and you can see all these. Um, little flags on it and it's just a really a beautiful fabric and then the um, focus fabric which would be the center it was those um, American flags so he's going to put it up on the screen and you'll see the image of the product I guess so they yeah. is, it, is it any of this Tony? Oh. Yes, that's okay, it. Yes, this is the focus fabric, and I love this one. I guess maybe they needed it or something, and so that would go right in the center, and I love that. And then inside will be um, this will be the lining, and the the bottom of the bag will be this, the hearts, and then the pockets will be this blue. Red, white, and it's not, it's not white, but it's like a cream color. So that was what the inside of the bag will look like. Actually, it will look just like that, okay? Yeah, and then, um, and, but that focus fabric right here is just so nice. And so that's called Heart's Anthem. You need to make one of these. Memorial Day is coming up. You'll have it for the whole summer. And okay, and then this one was boomer bloomerang, bloomerang. Okay, that one is uh, very perfect for right now. Everything I, I just I I was out of town and I came home and I was driving through the neighborhoods and there's, everything is just blooming um, so beautifully right now. And there's, there's a lot of these purple trees. I don't know what kind they are, but they're purple. <laughs> and um, so this will be the main fabric for the straps and the borders at the top and the bottom. And then this is the focus fabric right here. Okay. So it has little um, baskets of lilacs and birdhouses and little um, butterflies. And there's a bird here. So this one is directional. You'll have to... Um, kind of pay attention to that. I know when I when I made our sample, I you know we sew really fast here. <laughs> I always called speed sewing, and um, and I didn't look, and I, my birds were upside down, so I had to I had to undo that one and and put the birds right side up. And then um, the inside, uh, this will be the larger piece is the pocket, and it folds in half, so you have like it. So this will be the pocket. And then this will be the bottom of the bag, of the lining. So I just, I really like this lilac. Well, I guess 
It's more like a violet, I think. It's got a little pink in it. It's really nice, really pretty fabric. So that's called blue meringue. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what you're working on today. Okay. Okay. Then, so that was called bloom, um, blooming blues, right? Okay. All right. So this, um, yeah, this one is. Oh no, this one is. A, oh yes, I guess they changed it. Um, this yeah. is probably the 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 main fabric. It's a little different, but it's part of the collection, and I and I really like this one too. Um, this will make a perfect bag. So that will be the straps and the borders. And then the focus fabric, let's see, is this one. Okay. So that will be right down. No, that's that's not it. Let's see. That would be this, this one. It's the 10 inch piece. So that's the focus fabric, the focal fabric. And then the inside, this will be the bottom of the bag. And then this one will be the pocket. It has little butterflies on it. So that's a real, another real nice one. So very denim friendly. Goes with everything. <laughs> so, okay. And who's going to iron? Okay. And there's, there's a couple of. Okay. We have. I guess, uh, anything you want to say about the uh, magnetic hoops? You were using the 8x12? I was using the 8x12. I like that size. So even if you have a machine that will take larger sizes, we always say get the largest one you, your machine will take. So if it's a, the Solaris, it'll be the 10 and a half by 16. If you've got the um, Destiny or Merid Meridian or the Altair, then that's the 9 and a half by 14. But for the... Um, uh, like the Aerial and the uh, Pathfinder, the, the largest one is the 8 by 12. And, and, but I like that one, you know, get the largest one and then get the 8 by 12. So that's, that's a really nice size to have. Okay, well, I think that's probably all we have. Okay, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the machine up for a rolled edge. I always like people to see how quick and easy it is. I'm going to use the stretch thread right. in the upper looper. So, um, so we have our machine. And all right. So first of all, I always like to set the machine up. And um, so, and the needles is the first thing I always check. And this one has the over. This one has the overlock needle one in. So we need the um, overlock needle two in. So um, I'm going to take out the um, screwdriver, and we'll just loosen that upper screw. And we'll take that out and we'll snip the thread. OK. And then we need a little needle insertion tool. That um, the needle sits right in this little tool. There's, there's like a little indentation there. So that you always want that to face up. So when you put the needle in, you make sure it goes up the whole way. And your flat side goes towards the back. And we'll put that in. Sometimes I push down on it so it won't spin on me. And then I put the needle down in the machine and then come straight up. Now, I always tell people, that it's easier to put a needle in when there's already one there. You just kind of identify where it's supposed to go. So what I could have done is left that overlock needle one in and then put an overlock needle two in and then taken the one out. But I got it in um, without any problem. And then we'll take our screwdriver and we'll tighten that up. And it's very easy to see that your needles are up the whole way. I can see the top of that needle right here. Let me see if I can see it yeah. on the camera. Mm -hmm. So can you point that out? One yeah, more right here is where you can look right here. You can kind of see I that see there's it. air going yeah. through. That's where the overlock needle one was. But now I have overlock needle two and, and that and I can see the top of it. So you always know that your needles are up the um, up the whole way. 
Okay, so then, um, so we have uh, the, the overlock needle two in, and then we're gonna, um, I'll remove this so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So mm -hmm. this is your stitch length okay. right here. And um, if you'll notice that right there, it says standard and rolled. So whenever we do a rolled edge, there will be on our chart, will be a little R after the stitch length. And um, so you want to move that around. You can only go in one direction, so you have to go all the way around. So now I'm on the rolled side. And I'm going to put my, I'm going to put it at one and a half for right now, but then we'll test it. We can always uh, change the, and, and they give you a pretty wide range uh, for the stitch length. It's, you can be like under one, it could go up to three, depending on what you're, and what you like too. Some people like it really, really uh, close together. So then you would want like a, a stitch length of one. Okay, the next thing will be our stitch width, which is right here, and that's easy to, um, to see. Now, when, you, when I move this, the blade moves from right to left. So I go like that, and my blade is moving. So it's setting the, um, the width of your seam allowance, or uh, on this one, for this stitch, we want a, a very uh, narrow one because it's, it's going to roll under. So, um, and then also um, I have the right needle in, so I'm going to um, dial to the lower number. So right now it is on five and let's put this on like three and a half, okay? And then um, we need to put the stitch selector and we want that one on D, okay? okay? And then I'm pretty sure we have everything there. And now let's remove this thread. Now, if you have um, the, th the you remember for some of you, we, we, years ago we had to go. We had, when we threaded, we had to go upper loop or lower loop or right needle, left needle, and that every time you went from one technique to another, you had to undo the whole thing and start all over again. But because of the jet air threading, we don't have to do that anymore. We can, if there's a thread that's in the right place, you can leave it. So it makes it even faster. So, um, so this one is fine right here. This is the lower looper. They, then we're going to use the upper looper. And I'm going to put this, uh, this thread in here. Um, this is the stretch thread. And I just like the way it fills in for the rolled edge. And whenever I use the stretch thread, I like to take those cone holders off. Now this one is the overlock needle one. We're not using that one. So let's take that out and then I'll remove the thread. So we're gonna pull this forward. Let's see, this, this one was okay. I didn't need to do that. So we're gonna just kind of wind it back up. So we're gonna put that one in this, let's, go right here and like I pull forward all those threads and then I just pull it out like that. And that one is, let's do this since I pulled on it. We're just gonna let it, this is that lower looper that we're not re-threading. So I'm just gonna cut it and let it hang down. There we go. Okay, then now I'm going to get engage the thread guides. So we're going to go to threading. Let's do a little bit more threading. And then turn the hand wheel until they pop together. And you'll hear a pop. There we go. And then we'll take this one. And we'll put it up through the upper looper thread guide. And then through the tension disc, make, always make sure your presser foot is up when you thread that. And then we're going to kind of get a, and I'm going to thread this through the U for upper. And you notice there's no tension dials, which, um, so when you change the stitch selector, that's kind of what sets the tension. There's gears and things inside and everything kind of shifts 
into place to do that to the technique that you we want. And okay, this is a thread that's kind of um, fuzzy, I guess. And but when it goes through the tension disc, it straightens out. It looks like a regular piece of thread, but when it relaxes, it, it kind of puffs out. Mm -hmm. So that's um, so I'm going to go like this and I'm gonna go. And it usually goes in right away, but I'll show you what I do if it doesn't go in. There we go. There we go. Okay. And you just bump it in a little bit, or you can take tweezers and kind of feed it in. Give it some, some slack because it's going to go down and come out right there. Now, I noticed somebody was using the subsidiary loop. That, that was steep. So we're going to take that and move it over to the left. Okay, and then we're gonna just hit this button. There we go, and it came Look through. At that. Yeah, that's amazing. Every time. Every time, yes. It gets okay. me. And then we'll okay. take the uh, overlock needle too. So that's like your right needle. And then this one gets threaded like a regular sewing machine. So we'll bring it up and around and the take up lever and then there's a thread guide right above the needle and then what we'll do is we're going to use the needle threader on the machine and i like to lower my foot then because i just can i'm able to see a little bit better so we're going to cut at the length of the machine and then we'll go over here and just kind of hold this in place and and then we're going to and then see it goes through and, and then it pulls it the thread through the eye of the needle so we're all wow. set yeah let's see i just wrapped around the needle so i don't want it to do that so okay there okay so then i'm all set for threading so that was really quick all right, and then we're going to put our this back on our table. And then we'll close it up like that. All right, so now we have some fabric. And we're going to go to surging. And let's see, our foot control is right here. two pieces so we'll go like that so let's see what do I I have it on one and a half now I'm going to move the differential feed down a little bit I see a little bit of puckering. There, that's better. And there's my stitch. Now that one is about, well, I like that one. Wow. That's, yeah, that's really nice. So this was, um, I could see a little bit of puckering when I started. So right here, I put the uh, differential feed down. There's two sets of feed teeth on the machine. Um, there's a front set and a back set, okay? And when this is on normal, it they move at the same rate. So I put it down and it slowed down the front set so it held the fabric nice and flat and then it, it held it taut mm -hmm. and then so I didn't get any puckering. So that's what our differential feeds. And then if you're sewing on a knit, sometimes they stretch out so you would just move it up. But that's our rolled edge, perfect stitch. And 
Let's see, we'll put our foot back on. There we go. And I could lengthen that. Sometimes I like the look of a longer stitch. Most people like it very heavy, on some, but I like it sometimes as a, um, a little bit looser. There's the, the little bit longer stitch length. So it just depends on what you like. We'll get a real close shot. Hold okay. On. There right. we go. Okay. That looks yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our rolled edge. So what did they all see today? They saw the flat lock and the rolled edge. Oh, okay. And the wave stitch. Everybody always, that's, that's the flat lock. Um, this is where the... You pull the fabrics to get, you know, apart just, and um, then you have this stitch on. The, and so it depends on what you like. You can put um, either side on the right side of the fabric. And there's our wave stitch. We love the wave stitch. And we use it as much as possible. We always like, use the wave stitch. Okay, and this, okay, now let's see what kind of money do we have here. There's Gloria, Gloria Buck. She gets a bigger bill and it's um, 250. How do you like that? It has Washington, D.C. written there. And um, so that, the that's- The bill is actually larger in size. Yeah, but yeah. it's a lesser quantity. Oh, yes. Right? <laughs> it's like a Willy Wonka gold. Yeah, yeah, and then this is, um, okay, so they get, um, isn't it 500 or a $500 rebate and then also you get 250 in Gloria bucks. So this one you would use on in the store, and this one comes to you in the mail. And we and we send and we send it for you. We um, and it will come like as a Visa card. Oh wow! Yeah. So it's like getting the present, a really big present. <laughs> yeah. So you could always bring it back to Gloria Horn Sewing Studio and use it there, or use it on anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you want to? I have just got a couple more things. Someone, I'll take a mic. Hey, oh, yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's just use this camera for a second here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw someone mention, hey, what about the, uh, what about the, um, the felt walls? And uh, we, uh, I put them in the lineup here so you guys can see them. So this is the first time we're showing them. We have two up, but we've got one more to hang. But I just wanted to kind of talk about them a little bit. Um, they, are, they are really neat. Um, they do hold fabric. Let's go talk about... Mother's favorite first. Can we Mother's do that? Yeah. So let's go over. So I I uh, I hung mother Mother's favorites after our um, Thursday night okay, show. That's the name of it. Mother's yes, favorite. Mother's favorite. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, here's the uh, the diagram they give you to hang it, and um, that is really cool. Individual triangles and squares that mm -hmm. you follow along. They give you a bunch of these. Uh, felt right sticky pads that go on the back and they, they give you all kinds of directions here on how to install the towels. So like, here's how to install the different pieces and where to put the tabs at. And then the diagrams for the different ones that we got to how to set them up. So what I did is I just, I found that I wanted to put it in the center of this wall. So I found where the center of this wall is and I knew I wanted to be below that vent up there. So I just found the center and then I drew a, drew a straight line across and that's where I started in the center and just work out from there. And it, it, it came out really pretty yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't take long to install, pretty easy to, to install. You just follow the diagram, but they hold fabric, they're pinnable, they absorb sound and they, they, uh, they look really cool too. Mm -hmm. So we picked um, the more like quilt inspired ones. So this looks like a big quilt block. Uh, this is called Mother's Favorite. Um, and we chose the, uh, the colors that they had picked because we thought it might be the most popular, but I, I'm, um, I'm pretty sure you can, we can customize the colors for people um, with them. But mm -hmm. so this is uh, mother's favorite, uh, is one option there. Uh, this I think this is my favorite. Is yeah, that it really adds to the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the contrast of the white with the lighter blue and the darker blue really make it pop uh, when you're working with these. So that's mm -hmm. that's one option for our felt right wall, and um, they go up really quick and then they stay on there. 
and it's just it's it's really nice. But I've seen them in kids' rooms. People put them in like in their um, like dining rooms or different areas that they want to absorb sound or or have a pinnable wall and things. So uh, it's great for us quilters who want to put a quilt up there and work with it. So that's our, our mother's favorite. The other one we have on the wall here is our quilting star, and it's a little bit hidden here, but it's back there. What if I take this home down if we'd be able to see it a little better? This one is called um, Quilting Star. Yep, right there. Uh -huh. So this is Quilting Star. So um, same thing. We just found the center where we wanted to put, drew a line straight across for that top row, started in the top center, and just worked our way out. The diagram walks you through with the pieces that you need to set up for. So it's really pretty easy to do. Um, and then how to install the towels. And then they go right up. And they'll hold a piece of fabric here. Let's just grab one mm -hmm. piece of fabric here. Let's see if I put this up. So it'll hold oh, that's cool. quilt blocks mm -hmm. and different things. So if you mm -hmm. would need to uh, put um, your pieces up here. Good. Mm -hmm. It holds them pretty well. And then you can also pin to it as well. So that's, uh, that's a neat one. So this is like a, a periwinkle blue and then a really, really light, uh, it's, it's not lavender, but it's a really light blue to give that contrast to these. This mm -hmm. one, oh, I forgot to mention, this one is... 511 by 511 for size wise. Um, mother's favorite is six feet by six feet. And then the other one we thought was nice was bear's paw for an option for us. So it's um, tone on tone, a, a more neutral tan color. And this one looks like it's going to go up real fast because you have these big center blocks and just the um, half square triangles to go around the outside. And uh, we've all pieced quilt blocks together, so yeah. I'm kind of hanging these would be kind of mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's bigger. This is six feet by six inches, six feet by five inches. Um, and then there's that option too. So if you want to learn more about them, you can always give us a call and we can talk about them. But uh, we really like these color combos and I uh, thought they looked really neat. So if you guys want a, a felt wall in your room too, uh, here's yeah. your chance <laughs> to get one. So mm -hmm. yeah. I like the mother's favorite. Mother's favorite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. And they're like statement pieces. If you if you uh if you have that in your home and you have that on the wall, it's it's fun. They're really uh mm -hmm. to to look at and enjoy. So um I think that's it for today. Okay. All right. Well, tomorrow, then, Wednesday. Yeah. So we'll have Wednesday's Kimberbell. Mm -hmm. So Kathy and Mary Lou will be on. I'm pretty sure Kathy and Mary Lou will be here to uh, to do Kimberbell at 3 p.m. Uh, but we will uh we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.